Here's a pair right here that you might not give much thought about. You probably think that both of them are lady beetles, and you're sort of correct, but there is a major difference. The one on the left is the docile American ladybug or lady beetle. That's the one that most people remember from their gardens, and they kill aphids and all kinds of bad bugs. The one on the right, however, is an Asian lady beetle. That one is aggressive. It can bite if handled. The major difference is if you look on the right hand side, there is an M, an M shaped white mark by the head. That's the only way you can tell the difference. They are beneficial, both are, but with the aggressiveness and the defense mechanism that the Asian beetle has, you have to be careful around pets because they do secrete a yellow liquid that can be harmful to pets if ingested. Both are good. Like I said, they kill a lot of bad bugs, but you have to keep in mind the difference between a lady beetle and the Asian lady beetle. And opening with our first pest of the day, the Japanese beetle that can be recognized by the copper color wings. It's very iridescent looking and almost metallic like. They can strip a rose bush or any of your decorative plants and vegetables. They eat fruits, they eat the leaves, and the larvae feed on the roots of the plant. They're totally evasive here in America. And in Japan, they, they're kept under control by predators. But here in America, there isn't that many predators. So they have free range and they wreak havoc on most plants. And this is a common katydid that can be seen all over America. No matter where you live, these things are pretty prolific. They mimic tree leaves. And when in trees, you can barely make them out. They're also known other than katydids as bush crickets or the longhorn cricket. And some can actually eat other insects. And most of the time they live off of vegetation and trees and bark and grasses. But at night they can definitely be heard with their katydid kind of a call. And it's pretty reminiscent of a cross between a cricket and a cicada. Very interesting call and uh, very neat to see as well. But they're semi-beneficial because they eat insects as well. And here's one of the bad bugs that mimics a good bug. You might think that this is a lady beetle. It's actually a Mexican bean beetle. And these things uh, can bite, but they're not really known for uh, any painful bites, but they can cause devastation to crops. And in the wintertime, they tend to flock together and they try to get inside your house. And you'll notice because they'll be in large groups underneath of shutters and behind doors, wherever they can fit, they'll hide. If you've tried to grow zucchini or summer squash or winter squash, the vine borer is a pain in the neck. These things destroy any of the squash vines. You can see the larvae here. They tunnel in and totally devastate any squash plant. And they'll also attack pumpkins and watermelons as well. Once they've inserted their larvae into the plants, their eggs hatch, uh, there's no getting rid of them, unfortunately. A milkweed bug can be a pest of sorts. If you're trying to grow milkweed, they attack it. They will unfortunately chase away monarch butterflies from laying eggs there due to their defoliation of the plant. But these insects are actually pretty interesting to watch. Uh, they don't have a bite. They will not bite. They don't carry diseases. And for the most part, they do help farmers that have a problem with milkweed. But they will, like I said, uh, discourage monarchs from laying eggs on milkweed. One of the most evasive species of them all is the spotted lanternfly. They cause extreme damages to orchards, grapevines, fruit production. These things are horrible. They were introduced accidentally from Korea, originally from China. And if you see these in your yard, make sure that you report them to uh, 
the extension agencies. They usually need to know if these things have been showing up in your area. Chickens will keep these in check, as will praying mantises. But they lay usually up to 35 eggs per clutch, and they multiply so fast. So this evasive species has to be taken care of now. Not many uh, predators at this time other than uh, chickens, like I said. And uh, there are a few other insects that will feed on them. But unfortunately, they reproduce so quickly that it's hard to keep it under control. We switch now to the stink bug. Uh, these things uh, are a big royal pain to any orchard owner, farmer, or home grower. And unfortunately, they attack fruit trees, nut trees, and gardens of all sorts. They'll attack lettuces, any kind of fruit, tomatoes, vegetables. They don't care. They will eat it. When you find these, if you kill them, they definitely put out a, a rancid smell. But these are a true pest, and they need to be controlled however you can. Now, one of the biggest banes of any tomato grower is the dreaded tomato hornworm. And they're so good at camouflage that when they're on a tomato plant, you're looking at one, you can't even see it. That's how good they are at camouflage. But they have no biting parts to give a painful bite or anything if you pick them off the plant. And I just take them and pull them right off the plant and soak them in usually a mixture of, believe it or not, joy dishwashing detergent and water. And that seems to kill them. And the easiest way to find them is with a black light at nighttime in the garden. So if you have one of those little battery operated black lights, that's perfect. If not, plug one in and bring it out to your garden if you have an extension cord long enough and you'll be able to see them plain as day. They will uh, phosphoresce or they, they're actually iridescent. So uh, they'll actually glow in the dark and you'll be able to see them and pull them right off your plant before they can cause many more damages. And uh, the adult form is actually the sphinx moth. And uh, they look like a hummingbird almost when they're flying around. This is what's known as a sharpshooter bug. They feed on stems, they suck out all kinds of carbohydrates and liquids out of stems of plants. They are a pest and they get their name from actually when they evacuate their body and they actually shoot out waste in what looks like a hose stream. That's how they get the name, sharpshooter. Aphids are in everybody's garden. Uh, they are such a destructive little organism and usually they're protected by ants and you'll see ants actually uh, sucking the little honey balls off the back that are secreted and they work hand in hand protecting the aphids and they get a little sugary treat. And then we have the waxy covered woolly aphids and they're usually on fruit trees and plants and they look like a spider web kind of a thing uh, but they are destructive to any kind of uh, fruit trees nuts or plants the cicadas are 17 year locusts which a lot of people think that they're grasshoppers they're really not they're actually cicada they stay in the ground for up to 17 years as nymphs uh, living off of roots of plants and trees only to emerge 17 years after and what can be usually categorized as a mass hysteria as these things come out of the ground all at once and it seems that they're timed every 17 years or whatever uh, and they call them 17 year locusts but uh, they come out when the vegetation is at its best and we see a nymph here that lived in the ground for 17 years this is still alive i uh, happened to take it up in my garden and i'm holding it in my hand it uh, was still moving at the time and uh, they don't bite but i fed them to the chickens and the chickens seem to love them here we see various beetle grubs they will destroy your lawn and garden they feed on the roots and they'll also cause moles and voles 
to dig under your lawn and into your garden uh, to get these grubs out, which is actually helpful, but it, it can actually destroy your lawn and garden. So there's not much in the way of control. Grub X does work, but I like to use natural methods. Uh, BT is a, a good preventative. I had to throw these in. If you don't live on a coastal area, you've probably never seen these, but I'm sure you've probably heard of them. And they are green head flies. Oh my goodness. They have a bite that feels like the worst hornet you've ever been stung with. And these things, you slap them, they keep coming back. They don't stop until you finally kill them. And these green head horse flies are the worst. And I'm sure that you've ever been down to the shore, you've met these at least one time or another. One of the very few controls is dragonflies for these things. Which brings us to dragonflies. And these little guys will eat their weight in green heads and mosquitoes and all kinds of bad bugs. So they're great to be around and you don't have to worry. You don't be afraid of them. They don't bite and they won't cause any problem to humans. Uh, although if you have a swimming pool, you'll, you'll find that these things are very beneficial and you'll wind up having a few in your filter if you're not careful. The Colorado potato beetle is a problem in everybody's garden these things will come in and they'll eat your leaves whether they're potatoes tomatoes they don't care they have a ravenous appetite and they will destroy any garden in a short period of time and there's not many things that will actually eat them certain birds will and that's why I never discourage birds from coming inside my garden uh, but the only way I've found yeah, other than spraying is to pick them off and soak them in soapy water carpenter bees can be both a nuisance and beneficial they can chew perfectly round 3 8 holes in any untreated wood product and unfortunately they can cause damage but they also pollinate many flowers and the males don't sting but the females can so uh, it's best to leave them alone the males are very aggressive but they can't hurt you they will come after you and they can scare uh, children and those that are afraid of bees but uh, they will not uh, sting you as i said before but they they can mimic something that can sting the females generally stay in their homes and uh, they're not as aggressive as the males and obviously they do have the ability to sting. I had to throw a picture of this in. This is a monarch butterfly on one of my Mexican daisy flowers. The monarchs are so beautiful this year. It seems like their colors are so bright and very contrasty and uh, I've seen so many this year. There's an overabundance and they're great to see in any garden. Now here's a mixture of good and bad. This is a lacewing. They will suck certain saps out of trees and plants, but they also have a voracious appetite for other insects. So they are semi beneficial and I consider good in your garden. And sticking with bees and wasps, we have here a paper wasp. They are actually beneficial. I know a lot of people are afraid of them and many people are allergic to their stings, but these things kill so many caterpillars and bad bugs in your garden that they're actually a friend, not actually a foe. And one of the last bugs we're gonna cover is the praying mantis. These things have such a voracious appetite for insects, good and bad, they will wreak havoc with any insects. And they're very good to have around in your garden. You can handle them, but you have to be a little careful because they can bite at times. I've handled them for years and I've only been bitten once. And that was when I was real small and I was handling it incorrectly. But Again, leave these in your garden. They are great to have. Most people think that these are protected and that you can get fined for killing one or uh, disturbing them. That's not the truth. These things are not protected in any way. That's an old, old uh, myth or wives tale that was put out there to keep kids from messing with them. Uh, but highly beneficial and great and welcome in my garden any day of the week. And now to end with a in my garden that I really don't mind 
sharing my dill with. Well, that it didn't sound right, did it? <laughs> but a black swallowtail caterpillar. I don't mind sharing my dill. What a great garden addition. <laughs> 